Employee Pension Scheme 1995, often known as EPS 95, is a social security program that was introduced on November 19, 1995 by the Employees Provident Fund Organization. After retirement, this program offers pension benefits to employees in the organized sector. In this video, we are going to look at the calculation method of Employee Pension Scheme and also about the new Higher Pension Scheme option introduced in 2023 and the new method of calculation. Let's get started. Welcome to holisticinvestment.in. Currently, the employee and employer contribute 12% of their basic salary and dearness allowance to the Employee Provident Fund EPF. Employees contribution totally goes into EPF account. The employees pension scheme receives 8.33% of employers 12% payment while the EPF receives 3.67%. Next, long story start. Let us look at the amendments in short. In the year 1995, the Employee Pension Scheme was introduced as a part of Employees Provident Fund, EPF. The employer's contribution of 8.33% of 5,000 should be towards the pension scheme. March 1996, a clause was inserted into paragraph 11.3 of EPS 95, allowing the employer and employee to choose whether to contribute 8.33% of the employee's actual wage to the EPS uh, that is beyond the limit of uh, rupees 5000 or 6500 uh, such a greater wage would qualify as a pensionable wage uh, next in the year September 2014 uh, it increased the maximum pensionable salary to 15000 it was uh, earlier it was uh, around 6500 it also left out the provision to para 113 that is only the cap amount of 15000 is taken for calculation and not the actual salary. In the year 2023, employees are given an option to opt for higher pension. Here, instead of cap amount of 15,000, the actual salary is taken as a pensionable salary. Let us understand this with the help of actual figures. An employee's basic salary plus dearness allowances is rupees 75,000. The table here deposits the calculation of employer's contribution alone as there is no confusion about employee's contribution. Employee's contribution directly goes into EPF account. In the earlier method, whatever your salary, a constant amount of rupees 1,250, that is 8.33% of 15,000, gets into EPS account. The balance goes into EPF account. Here, uh, 12,000 into 75,000, 9,000. So, 9,000 minus 250, 7,750 goes into EPF account. In the new method, the actual salary is taken for calculating the EPS contribution. A major portion goes into EPS account and the balance goes into EPF account. So here EPS contribution 8.33% into 75,000, 6,250. EPF contribution 3.67% into 75,000, 2,750. If you opt for the new higher pension, there is a change in the pension calculation that you receive after retirement. Let us look into that formula. New method, pensionable salary, that is average of last 60 months salary into number of years of contribution divided by 70. Uh, in the previous method, pensionable salary means average of last 12 months salary into number of years of contribution divided by 70. Now let us look at the impact of opting for higher pension option. Home salary, that is, there will be no impact on the net salary. Uh, EPS and EPF, once you opt for higher pension option, uh, it has a retrospective effect. So calculations are done from the date of joining and the difference is transferred from the EPF account to the EPS account. This in involves some nominal administrative charges. After such a transfer, your EPF balance would have been reduced. EPS balance would have arisen, thereby getting a higher pension during the post-retirement period. Now let us move on to the individual standpoint. Uh, so far we discussed the amendments and the calculation to understand their effect. What should be your final decision? What happens if you opt for higher pension scheme? If you exercise this option, obviously you will be eligible for higher pension. But the point here is that a contribution to EPS will be higher. Eventually, contribution to EPF will be reduced. What happens to EPS account? You won't be allowed to withdraw the EPS balance. You are eligible for pension as calculated above. Your pension is fully taxable. You get the same pension amount throughout your lifetime. After your lifetime, 50% of your pension is available to your spouse. 
Even it is extended to kids 25% of pension for each kid up to a maximum of 2 kids till the age of 25 years. EPF account at the time of retirement the EPF balance is available uh, to you as a lump sum amount you can add this to your retirement kitty it is fully exempt from tax the current rate of interest on EPF is 8.1% if you make higher contribution to EPF during your working years, you can accumulate a bigger retirement corpus. The longer the period, the better it compounds. If you opt for higher pension, the only advantage is you get a pension. If the last 5 years salary is low due to unavoidable reasons, then you may receive a lesser pension. Here, pension is not calculated based on your accumulation in EPS account, but rather based on the last drawn salary. Meanwhile, till your retirement, there might be amendments in the Act. Even if the same rule applies, the pension amount will be minuscule owing to inflation. On the other hand, your EPF balance will also be low. A higher pension through EPS leave you, uh, leaves you with no liberty with your money. Accumulating the corpus through EPF will leave you with n number of options. As financial planners, we insist on accumulating retirement corpus through EPF. Uh, here you have an option to invest into a diversified portfolio to take care of your post-retirement needs. Uh, you have various options to invest your retirement corpus like senior citizen saving scheme, mutual funds, RBI floating rate bonds. Uh, to put in nutshell, we recommend you to continue with the current EPS contribution that is 1250 and accumulate corpus through employee provident fund where you get better interest also you will be open to many options uh, to invest your cor corpus as you wish at the time of retirement from tax perspective also continuing your current eps contribution is advisable opting for higher pension scheme is of no use instead of going for a ready-made pension plans it is better to handle your retirement corpus on your own or through professional financial advisors a detailed blog post on this topic is available in our website and check the link in the description hope you like this video if you have any questions related to this or any other investment option or related to your financial goal don't hesitate to book a free appointment with our financial planners the link to the free booking is given in the description box below. Also, will you be interested to attend any insightful investment webinar? Then feel free to register for the upcoming enlightening investment webinar. It is completely free. The registration link for the upcoming webinar is also given in the description box. If you like this video, please give us thumbs up. Also, share it with your social circle. If you haven't subscribed our YouTube channel so far, please subscribe now.